guys. And yes, hello, Robert, U.S. Air Force. You see the hat back there, right? Uh, I've grown up in bases all over the world. Um, and yes, so I definitely understand transitioning in middle school years and everything, just picking up as we need to be, and the wonderful opportunity to get to serve the company, so that country. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your service. Um, we've got Julie here with Choctaw Small Business. Here's my con perfect, perfect. I see you, Michael. You got it. Um, absolutely. Don't worry. It'll pick up the email that you actually registered with. All right. And I'll tell you in a little bit how you can get a copy of today's slides too. Okay. So hang with me for a moment. Let's go ahead and go in and talk about how you can use YouTube to grow your business. If you're tweeting or posting, please use the hashtag grow with Google. It lets the Google team know that this matters to you. And I like that because as a small business, I know a lot of people, a lot of small businesses pay their hard earned, very hard earned money for services that are 100% free with Google tools, but they have no idea how to maximize and optimize that. So I'll be talking to you more about that, especially YouTube specifically today. Of course, if you're on Twitter, you can find me at, at Maria Duran. That's my Twitter handle. I'm real active on all socials. So you can find me, just Google me, right? This is me on Instagram at Maria Lena Duran. So it's my whole name there. Plus I'm also there on YouTube. So you can find my YouTube channel there too, using that because we now have YouTube handles. I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's go ahead and dive into everybody. I'm glad you're finding that question box. See, I told you that's where you need to be found and to let me know. Awesome, awesome, Barbara. Oh, I'm so grateful you're here. So why YouTube? All right, if you don't know already, let me give you a little bit more information. There are 2 billion monthly users on YouTube. 2 billion, but a billion hours are watched every single day of YouTube. Now, let me tell you why YouTube is such an amazing video platform, because I understand TikTok, Instagram Reels, Stories, even the new Jump Rope, which is more like TikTok on LinkedIn that's coming out. I understand all Be Real, you know, so I understand that. But when people go to YouTube, they are very focused. They are looking for information. Many people will say, I go to YouTube University. I'm looking and checking out manuals of how to figure out how to do this, how to clean my Keurig, how to be able to start my smartphone. We don't even look at the manuals. We go to YouTube right away to figure out how to look and to learn. If you think about the movie, The Matrix, when Trinity and Neo would plug in, that's what it's like. We go in there and go, I don't know jujitsu. Oh, great, I know jujitsu now. That's what we do when we go to YouTube. It's a very focused search and because of that, we have people's attention span. See, a lot of times when they're on social, they're just scrolling around and sometimes you'll get a tap, a three second tap and you think, oh, somebody's interested in that information, but they're not, it's a mistake, they pressed a little bit harder. So now they go on down the line. The focus and to be able to get people's attention is not as strong there. Now, let me give you a couple other reasons. Google's the number one search engine in the world. The number two search engine in the world is YouTube. They're both owned by Google. That's why as business owners, it is on us to know and learn and understand how Google search works. We need to present to the Google bot, just like we do to a real person and somebody who's looking for information. Because if we don't do that, then it won't present us in the 10 organic search results that Google does provide. Then yes, YouTube videos and YouTube shorts show up in Google search and organic Google search, which is where you want to show up. Because if you're not on the first page of Google, you don't exist. And if they don't know you exist, they can't do business with you. So you do want to make sure you're taking advantage of this. Think about that. If you're looking at a search result page, every search result page comes with 10 organic search results. And in there, if it's you and your YouTube channel, and then maybe it's your LinkedIn profile, and then a blog post that you did, if it's all about you, it really positions and elevates you as an expert at what you do. And if you can better articulate exactly what your customer's going through and their needs, they'll see you as the solution provider. So that is why we like to use YouTube. Plus, only 9%, 9% of businesses have a YouTube strategy. So welcome to the upper percentage if you're starting to put that together and actually apply what you learned today. People are looking also when they want to shop. I mean, look at this. They're looking for information, something new. Look at shoppers, 70% of shoppers will actually purchase from a brand. 
So I am very guilty of, I've not been in an actual physical store probably for about four or five years unless I'm picking something up. And this is why, because I am an Instagram real shopper. I'll go on Instagram, I'll see what's going on, I'll see a video, I'll go to their LTK, I'll go to their commission or affiliate link and I'll buy that way. And maybe I'll have it delivered to a store that I need to go pick up or at least drive into the parking lot or maybe brought to me. But I don't go into a store. So as you know this, this is how a lot of people are shopping. Are you missing that market? As we know that 74% go to their mobile device, their smartphone, when they want to know, go do or buy. Are you there? Are you visible so that they know that you have a solution that they can consider, be it a product or a service? Okay. So let's talk about how you can create your YouTube channel. Give me a one in the question box if you already have a channel. I would love to know. And if you want to drop the link there, I will save the chat so I can go back and subscribe to your channel later this week. Okay. Let me see. I've got, yes, Amy, so good to see you as well. Guadalupe, I see you too. Welcome, welcome. Okay, see a lot of people with channels. All right, so do not despair. Even though you have a channel and you're like, oh, she's going to go through how to create your YouTube channel. You may not have max uh, optimized that as far as your setup. So let's double check and make sure that you don't have any bad habits at play that are keeping Googlebot from seeing you. All right. And then also we're going to talk about how you can add videos to your channel. Because remember what I said that, Google is the number one search engine in the world. YouTube's number two. Well, YouTube's also the number two social network above TikTok. That's interesting, right? TikTok's hot on its heels, but above TikTok because you can build community and people are looking not just for information and authentic, helpful information that they can get right away. They're also looking for community. So you've got both at play in YouTube and the results present in Google search. How cool is that? Where 98% of the world goes already to search. So promote your business with video ads. I'm going to spend just a little bit of time of this, not much. And the reason being is I'm a big fan of free or small fee. And I know that a lot of people do not maximize and optimize their Google tools, especially YouTube. Do all of this first before you promote, because if you do ads, all you're doing is amplifying what you're doing. And if it's chaotic, if it's unclear, that's all you're amplifying and you'll waste a lot of money. And I know cash flow is king for we small businesses, and I don't want you to do that. I want you to get good return on your investment before you ever have to worry about expending more money. And then as I end everything, I will recap and really talk to you about what is it that you're going to apply and then give you more free resources to help you apply that. Deal, everybody? So let's go ahead and dive in. If you want a copy of the slides from today, go up and put the number two in the question box. The system will pick that up and it will send it out at the same time that I actually send out, or it actually sends out because I don't physically send it out, but that it sends out the actual recording. Okay, just putting my earbuds away because the video is a little bit later. Let's go ahead and run, everybody. How do you create your YouTube channel? Remember, don't despair if you have a channel. You will pick up some things. I guarantee it. So let's go through here. All right. With YouTube, if you don't already have a YouTube account, you're going to sign in here. When you go to youtube.com, you'll see at the upper right hand corner, you could do that. Now, if you have already a free personal Gmail account or a free Google account, you have access to this already. If you don't know how to find that, let me know in the question box and I'll give you a live demo how to find that. Okay. So let me know there. Again, this is where you find it. You're going to jump on in. Now, just like every other YouTube, uh, Google tool, it gives you every opportunity to find information. So what you can do is click on Create Channel here, which will show up in the drop down when you click on the little icon here to the right. So as you start a Google account, if you haven't put your photo in there, it will pick up the initial of your first name and put this here in this little person. So you'll see a little icon probably with, for me, it's an M. You get a chance to create a channel after or when you're starting a channel, it'll also give you that opportunity with this pop-up. Now you can customize that channel. This is very key. Do not miss this step because branding is very important. Brand consistency builds trust. And when you see a different logo over here, when I'm on Facebook or Instagram, on TikTok, it's a different logo or a profile picture, different colors over here on Twitter, on LinkedIn, their company profile page is a little bit different. If all of that is different, that actually makes people feel that you're a little bit wonky and unclear, and maybe you're just doing this as a side hustle and not really serious about this. If they want to put their money down on something they're looking for, 
a brand they feel like is excellent at what they do because everybody may have a beer budget and champagne dreams, but they still want the best. So how can you promote that you're the best? Be consistent in your branding. There's a reason when we see the golden arches, when we're rolling down the highway, we know exactly what that means, that color. We know what that brings. It's a part of their brand and they're consistent across all platforms. Well, are you consistent? Because a lot of small business owners will get bored with their graphics, their font, their art, their messaging before anybody even sees it. So you can customize the channel here and you can upload videos. Let's get into what's the best way to do each of these. You're gonna do it from YouTube Studio. So you'll see here that you have the chance with a pop-up here. Also, if you go to that icon in the top right-hand corner, you can go to the drop down there and now you can go to YouTube Studio with the right account. That's also a challenge because free Google accounts and free personal Gmail accounts are easy to start. A lot of people don't remember which account they actually associated with the YouTube channel. So you might want to write that down or have some sort of password protector site online so you know exactly what everything where everything lives, okay? All right, let's dive in. Oh, let me see if there's any other questions here. Perfect. Per oh, I love that you're putting your, your um, channel URLs in the, the, the uh, question box. Thank you, because I'll go back and subscribe to you. So let's look at the layout, all right? The first thing with the layout that you need to do is have a couple of assets. So you need a couple of videos that you're going to use in your channel. The first is the channel trailer. It's just what it sounds like. It's a trailer, like a movie trailer to draw people in and attract them, especially your best customers. You do need to use this to encourage them to hit that bell, subscribe, get notified every time I post. All of that you're going to do with your channel trailer. A lot of people don't utilize this, but you do need to. This is enticing those subscribers and you want subscribers because they are the ones who now are giving their hand up saying, I am interested in your information. So they are paying more attention. After they subscribe, there's what's known as a featured video. This is another video. Now, best practice to do is to have a channel trailer to draw them in and a featured video now thanks them. Hey, thank you so much for subscribing. Every Thursday, I go live at nine o'clock. So you have an idea of what's going on. You understand as the person who's subscribing what the benefit is of actually subscribing to this channel and getting notifications. Understand, our inboxes are all stressed out, as well as all of our notifications, our Slack, our WhatsApp, all of those are stressed out. We're getting messages everywhere. There has to be some sort of value to me to be able to, just, to subscribe to your channel, okay? So those are the two the assets that you need, two videos that you need. Then you have featured sections, so by default, YouTube is set up to show a case and up the latest uploads, but you don't want to do that because that's what everybody does. They just leave it. You need to, again, stand out as an expert at what you do and really showcase your brand. Even if it's your personal brand, this is a strong place to brand yourself because people instantly feel a connectness, connectiveness and rapport with somebody that they see in a video. It's almost like you're inviting them into a conversation with you. So featured sections are actually set up like bookshelves underneath your main featured video by topic. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, first, for the user, it makes it easy for that person to find the information they're looking for. But second, it also makes it easy for Googlebot to find you. You see, with playlists underneath here, those sections, you can say things like, let's say, for example, Score Austin. You want to do a whole playlist about how to become a SCORE client. So you could do eight separate videos and it's in the playlist and the playlist itself has description box that you can describe what the playlist is. Good place to put keywords and key phrases. Those are the words and phrases that people search for as well as Google bots trying to match. Understand the first part of Google's algorithm is relevancy. How well do you match what somebody's searching for? If you're not using their words, then you're not going to match. Googlebot is not going to show you up in search. So it's important for you to know. Now, I understand a lot of us are experts in our business. And so we become very familiar with industry speak but understand how your best customer search. That's your job, to become an expert in your customer. You have to do that work. Think about, for example, like if I was looking for a pediatric dentist, I'm not gonna go and look for a pediatric dentist or say, hey Google, hey Alexa, show me a pediatric dentist. I may jump onto my Facebook feed and say, hey, does anybody know who can help straighten a 13 year old's teeth? And that's what I'm gonna ask, hey Google, hey Alexa. We need to know those words because if we say, well, 
Here you can find out about become, or working with or becoming a patient of a pediatric dentist. You're not going to get found. So how do you find out what their words are? Ask them, okay? Find out and speak to your customers. If you don't have customers yet, reach out to friends and family member who do business with competitors who also are serving that same exact customer that you could be working with. You can also look at your competitors' reviews, right? Read their reviews. In their own words, their own customers are telling you what matters most to them. They're also saying where the gaps are and maybe that's your sweet spot that you really do well with, okay? So these feature sections are great ways for you to highlight and really give a little bit of good Google juice, search engine optimization juice, which is making sure that Googlebot can see you and deliver you in search results. All right, let me see if there's any questions here. No, oh, some YouTube channels, more YouTube channels to subscribe to. Thank you to everyone. All right, let's go and talk about branding because this is key. That profile picture, take a look at all your socials. Is it consistent? Remember what I said about building trust? Also, that banner image. Understand, look and see what it looks like. What's the banner of your LinkedIn profile, your TikTok, your, um, not your TikTok, sorry, your Twitter profile. What is also, you know, there on that banner and make sure it's matching so you see that consistency. What I like about YouTube is that it's on already, the app is on most phones and all of these banner images will be mobile responsive. So they adjust to whatever device. So I could start out on my mobile phone, throw it over to my iPad. Then when I'm done later in the evening, I'm sitting in front of my smart TV, I throw it up there. I can watch it any of those places and still look and be a good experience for me. Plus retain the integrity of your branding. You are looking for this because branding is so key and it takes time to brand and consistency. Now you can put basic info in. Remember what I said about learning your customer's words, this is also where you can apply that, right here in the description. Remember, the description is not all about you. It is all about them. What is it that you deliver to them? What need or issue do you already help them with? What are they searching for that if they knew this piece of information, that would help them with their answer? Put that in your description. This is very critical because you only have a few characters you can use in your description and you do want to make sure that you're showing up when they're searching for you, okay? Now also you can put your channel URL, any links, any contact info, but I've got a little best um, practice and actually expert tip for you. Don't just put your website address in there and I'll show you why in a moment because there's more uh, visibility that you can get if you're even more specific and I'll show you. Now you're with your channel URL, that is the unique URL. So that's that website address of where your channel is. Understand by default, it's a bunch of gibberish. But now rolling out just within the last month are YouTube handles. So they actually take whatever is the name that you're using and put this here. You can also name your channel. So understand I have youtube.com slash Maria Connects. That's my channel. But I also just got a handle that says youtube.com slash Maria Elena Duran because that's my name I use in all of my Google accounts. So because of that, I have two ways, however you know me, either by knowing my full name or if you don't know, it's Duran and you try to put an A and try to make it Duran, you're not going to find me, but you know Maria Connects. You can do that, then you can find me both ways. And that really, that customizing also helps with the branding. Now, why did I say that about... Um, the website address. Well, if you look here at the banner image, you see right here how the icons that you put here, all your socials and your website link are there. Well, right here in this instance, he has DIY Creators website. Why did he keep it that way? Well, it's his brand name, but also best is DIY Creators is a highly search, uh, search keyword term. So people are searching for it. And he knows that he'll get a lot of visibility using that. But a lot of people just put website. Well, that's not helpful to anybody. What wasted space? So you could, for example, for me, I would put, you know, marketing, coaching, help with marketing, um, help with Google tools. I could put that here instead of just website because people can hover over here and they know it's clickable. They know that and they can click through to it. But what is the benefit they're going to get from clicking through to it? Look at his banner image too. See that nice colorization? That's all the same across all of his socials. Everything's there as well as his profile picture. So he doesn't have like a profile picture of him 10 years ago and him now and somebody's looking at it on a little screen trying to figure out, is that the same person? Am I gonna subscribe to them? Because I'm not sure if this is them. And then he does have his video spotlight. That's that feature video I was telling you about. 
as you organize the channel, remember what I said about playlists, putting this together and really taking advantage of everything that you have to show up in front of your ideal customer. So in his instance, he has one that says build and furniture. So DIY build and furniture. He's got all this together and broken up into segments instead of one long video. Understand that the longest video that can be on YouTube is 12 hours. 12 hours, you can have, you can make your own mini movie, your mini series. You can actually film a whole conference on that and don't have to worry about hosting it anywhere except for on YouTube. But understand that in 2020, Netflix taught us all very well to think episodically, right? We don't want to watch all of Game of Thrones to get to what was really impactful to us at, C at episode eight of season one and the first 12 minutes in, okay? We don't want to do that. Plus, if you break it down, what's nice, it makes it snackable and easy to share. So you could share this with your friends and now more people are actually consuming that content. Look at those sections though. You do have a lot of availability there, okay? To be able to describe not just what that actual playlist is, but also what that video brings to you. And I'll talk to you about your videos and how you can optimize those even better than um, keywords. Yes, you do need keywords, but how you can do that a little bit more impactfully in Google or in YouTube, all right? And understand, we also have YouTube Shorts. So I do wanna talk to you more about that. I'll bring up some of the best practices you can do in uploading your Shorts and making those visibility because 30 billion hours a day, yeah, take that all in, 30 billion hours a day, was spent on shorts. In fact, Google is just starting to monetize, or Google YouTube, because they're both owned by the same company, are starting to monetize things for shorts. So short creators can now get a, a little bit of, of a creator money from that. So let's talk about creating and adding videos to your channel. Before I do that, I want to take a quick break just to see if there's any questions. Oh, do you have a recommended length for each video in a playlist? Really depends on your topic. Like for example, uh, Marina, if um, I was wanting to know how to repair my um, my Samsung dishwasher um, because it's not turning on, then I may watch a full 18 minutes, you know, because I want to know how to repair this. But the shorter, the better. So it does depend on your topic. If you're having an event and it's a 15 minute session, you're probably gonna wanna use all 15 minutes unless you're doing a teaser, you might do a short. Shorts are 60 seconds max, okay? Great question. The first you need to know as you create and upload a video for the first time, because remember what I said, the first thing you'll need are two assets. One is your trailer video and the featured video for those who subscribe to your channel. So do you want that to be something instant, fast, raw, authentic? You're gonna do it here because I've got a whole, whole studio right here. I can cut, edit, and do everything that I need. Beautifully crisp video right here for my phone, plus it's instant. So I can be raw and be real. But that might not be what's in the goal for your brands. If you're branding, let's say, more of a um, business, and so you're you're wanting employees to apply and you're looking to set up your brand culture and it's a little bit more professional or it needs to be for your profession, then you might want a studio to do this. So decide for yourself which is the best tool for you and truly gets to your goals for your brand. And really think about that. What are you doing? Are you elevating your expertise? Or are you elevating a brand culture? Are you wanting to get more sales and more contacts, more downloads? What is it that you're doing? The next thing you want to do is think about your video concepts. What is the story that you want to tell? I want to take a moment here and talk about story because understand that even though we have a story to tell, we need to know who the subject is of the story. Is it you? Are you the subject? Is it a best customer? Is it the product? I was working with a product, I work with a lot of inventors, and I was working with a product development team who thought the inventor was the story, but you could tell as we launched the video about the, the inventor making it, they had no interest in that. The actual star of the story was the product. They wanted to know, what could it do here? What's this magic little compartment here? How does this work? Who is that really dishwasher safe? They wanted to know all of that. So what is the purpose? What's the story? What's the purpose? And who's the star of the video? Do all of that work up front so you're not trying to do that all on the fly and losing a lot of time because a lot of people do get frustrated with trying to do a video because they're searching for all of this while they're in the midst of recording. Now, what I like to teach people a lot to try first is their business story. 
but I've got some best practices for you to, sh to share with you about this. Because in a business story, yes, you're co covering who, what, why, but if I were to do that, just like right now, and I said, okay, my name is Maria Lena, Maria Lena Drawing. I'm a property and casualty insurance agent, and I can help you protect your home, your boat, your SUV, any of your off-roading vehicles. I can keep you safe, be it a fire, a theft. I look out for all of that. I assess exactly what it is, is the, um, the cost and the value of your property. You can reach me at 555-1212. I'm Maria Lena, Maria Lena Drawing. All right, I could spend my 30 seconds talking that way. Who, what, why? But that is all fact-based, right? And we all know the same. Facts tell, stories sell. But here's the thing in a story. In a story, people are looking for how they fit in the story. They're not looking at you. So it really isn't all about you. This is about them. All right, so here, let me tell that story a little bit differently now. Hi, I'm Maria Lena. And when I was seven years old, we had a family come knock on the door. My father's an insurance agent. And they came to thank him because he had done such a great job valuing all their property and they had experienced a fire. And they had so much stress to worry about, but they didn't have to worry about this. They really were so grateful that he covered everything and was so thorough because they had lost everything, but this they didn't have to be worried about. It was at that moment I knew I wanted to help people when they were having and experienced that kind of tragedy, I wanted to be that light there at the end of the tunnel for them. I became a property and casualty insurance agent. My name is Maria Elena Duran, 555-1212. You feel the difference in a story? Okay. When we're little kiddos, what do we ask for first when we want to go to bed? You know, what is it that we want? Do we want somebody to just tuck us in or do they want it? We want them to tell us a story. We are built to hear story. All right. That's what we like. But here's a few things that you can recognize in that story. One is, I didn't tell you, I'm going to tell you a story, okay? Other than setting up that this is the difference between facts and the difference between story. But a lot of us as adults start our stories that way. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story. And that is clue for the rest of us watching in the audience that, oh my God, I've got to check out. This could get long and boring. It's like saying, showing your vacation photos. Nobody wants to see them, okay? So just drop them in. Drop them in the reality. That's what I did. There was a knock on the door right? I also had an outline for that story. It's the five-year-old hero journey outline. Let me teach it to you. It's once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. Once upon a time, I was a little girl and there was a knock on the door. Suddenly, this family came, their house had burnt down. My father valued this. Luckily, he had done that for them and it inspired me to become an insurance agent. Happily ever after, I now am an insurance agent and I can help serve you with that same passion and care. Okay, once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. I use it anytime somebody's diving into their business story because it drops you right into the action. It is set up for adult learners, adult people to hear the story. So they're dropped right in and it takes you through already exactly the protagonist, antagonist, all of that quickly. Once upon a time, suddenly, luckily, happily ever after. That is how I like to encourage people to do their business story, really set up the hero journey first. After you do that, you can do a product or service story. Really go into depth and think about what does it matter to them? What did they need? Oh, it's great that you provide 24-hour delivery. What does that mean for me? That's a fact, you, you provide 24-hour delivery. Well, you're already wanting us to deliver because you need more weekend in your week as you're trying to handle all these schedules. We deliver the weekend to you by you not ever having to worry, okay? That's the benefit of 24 hours. We put more weekend in your week. Think about for you, what is the benefit that you provide from providing this service or solution? Or you can do a promotional story where you're really talking about a specific product or a deal, something that you have as a special event, so you're pushing that out there to people. Let me see. Um, how well does YouTube work for business to business? Very, very well, because we're all people. Understand people do business with people. They do not do businesses with companies or products. They do business with people. Now, even though you may be product focused and say, oh, I love that amazing product. Somebody somewhere along the service line who answered a chat, who answered a phone, who texted you back, someone became a person there. And we do like to do business with people. We're more likely to leave businesses that we only have a business transactional relationship with other than a personal relationship with. Okay, um, let's see, let's talk about that clear, concise message, right? You've got five 
to 15 seconds. That's it, everybody. Our attention spans like crazy. We've got 12,000 messages coming at us in any given time of day. And in order for it to sit clear, we have to have that first strong impression. Plus, we need a call to action. I see some amazing videos when I go visit and subscribe to your channels. I see some amazing videos and no call to action whatsoever. Understand I'm watching a video and somebody's walking in my office or I'm getting a, a WhatsApp text or maybe somebody's hitting me up on Slack and then all of a sudden now my son needs me to go pick him up because he's got a flat in his tire. So I'm getting inundated. I come back to your video and I have no idea what I'm supposed to do next. So I go to the next video. Too hard for me to figure out and try to read everything. I go to the next video. Have a very clear and compelling call to action. Know what you want them to do after they see your video. Do you want them to be, how do you want them to feel? Do you want them to be excited, energized? Do you want them to be motivated, angry, frustrated, scared, really, really empowered? What is it that you want them to feel? Give them one or two things within that video. Keep it nice and short. Remember people's attention spans like this and then give them a really strong call to action. Compel them to come back or compel them to look even further into what you have on your site or where they can find you online. Make sense? All right, yes, yes, Andrea, this is being recorded and because you've commented here in the question box, you'll get a copy. So it's only going out to the people who actually commented in the question box, the recording, to the email address that you registered with, but 24 hours from now. So this time tomorrow, right? Not tonight, because it takes that long for the video to render. And if you want a copy of today's slides, just put the number two in the question box, all right? Um, can I have more than one channel per email? Uh, yes, yes, you can, you sure can. All right, so again, um, you can set all that up. And if you need me to show at the end, I can show you how to do that. Uh, let's talk about production techniques. We know we can do selfies, right? We, we see a lot of people doing really well with that. Or a backdrop, you can put a green screen there, or you can have that backdrop removed and even put in video. I do that a lot because I don't have a green screen, but I do that a lot as far as removing the background and putting another video. You can do a voiceover, so you turn off the sound, but now you're voicing over exactly what's happening. A lot of times you'll do that with walkthroughs or even as you're describing an event that's happening. A top down is just that, you hold that phone, let's say you're recording with your phone and you're recording, looking top down, okay? It could be just simple point and shoot or an action shot. It could actually be told with text. We see that happening a lot of time in TikTok and Instagram. And also it could be animated. But for best tips, if you'll look at this URL in the bottom left-hand corner, and I'll move that little red dot out of your way, if you want to screenshot that and include that in your to-do list to check that out, some best tips that'll help showcase your brand most effectively on YouTube, you can do that. I swear it doesn't just apply to YouTube, it also applies to any place that you do video. Now, when you're shooting your video, look behind you. We've all been on those Zoom calls already or Google Meets where we saw something we didn't want to see and can't unsee. Spouse coming out of the bathroom half dressed, the cat walking along there and then pooping on your desk. <laughs> I haven't seen that but I've heard. I don't want that experience. Or the unmade bed. I've seen quite a bit of that. I've, I've had people that I work with that I highly respect but then all of a sudden I see that unmade bed and I'm like, yeah, the mom and me can't help it. The military brat and me mm, just can't help that. Of course, lighting is also important. Understand I am actually coming from my home studio because we're all working remotely still with the Google team. So we do a lot of remote work and we're all over the US, all over the world. But understand my window's way over there. So it's way, way over there. The natural light is not possible for me. So I do have two loom cubes that I use that are on little, little stands. I was using a ring light, but what it was is it, it gave an actual um, um, shine, um, reflection from my eyes, made me look like I was just burning you with x-ray vision. I didn't like that impression. So now I went to ring lights that I can move and adjust like that a little bit better. And then of course, sound. This is really important because while we can also control space and lightning, if lighting, if that's a mess, you know, your shadow, you got a mess in the background, that unmade bed. If sound is bad, people are unforgiving about that. They will leave your video if the sound is crunchy, really, really low, I can't hear it, or really, really loud, it's just a lot of echoey and reverberating in there, they won't listen to it, they will leave. That's part of the reason when we're on the International Comic Con, so San Diego has an International Comic Con, and we're running around with 100,000 of our best friends on Comic Con floor, I will actually go with a video live and I'll attach an actual lavalier microphone to it so that they can ha hear and pick up what the five foot experience is, because I'm five foot tall, of walking around Comic-Con floor. So remember, sound is everything when we're looking at video. 
because of sound is everything. We know that people like sound. I mean, we've all gone to, to the talk board. So talk board actually is talkboard.com and you can find out what's trending on TikTok right now. And we try to use those effects within Instagram because we want to get more visibility of a trending sound. Well, a lot of times if you try to download that, especially from Instagram, you can't because it's a copyrighted song. Plus, if you try to bring it in yourself and it's copyrighted, it may not be visible anymore because you're using something without rights and you'd have to pay somebody a royalty fee for that. There's an audio library in YouTube with all of this available to you, 100% free, royalty-free music. And if you become a YouTube creator, you even get more access to this, even sound effects. So all this is 100% free with any free personal Google account, Gmail account, your YouTube account, you're good to go. Now, before I talk about adding videos to your channel, let me make sure I haven't had anybody here with, hello, hello, Pam with any questions. What if I don't show my face? I still have a day job. Yeah, you don't have to show your face. A lot can be done with just showing things on screen. I do a lot of walkthroughs on screen. I also do, I, I know a lot of accountants who don't like to get on camera, but they'll show the messy boxes or all the different spreadsheets and then how it becomes this beautiful um, document that they can take you know, for any accounting or even to submit to the IRS, whatever. They show the benefit within pictures and do a voiceover of all the pictures. So you can do that too. You don't have to go on camera. Oh, no worries, Lisa, I'm so glad it's helpful to you. Well, that's why you want a copy of the recording when it comes in 24 hours too, because you can slow me down and speed me up or listen to things over and over again till you get that, okay? Um, is there a digital background? In um, YouTube, no, but in Google Meet, yes. So much like Zoom, Google Meet, which is the, the free alternative to Zoom that you get with any free Google account, you can do a background there. But in order for you to record and save a recording with Google Meet, then you do have to have a paid workspace account. So there's a little bit there that you have to work with. But you can definitely record a, a Zoom and then use that into your YouTube channel. There's nothing wrong with doing that, okay? But you just might wanna follow some of the best practices of how to you, you can position yourself in a Zoom so it shows up well in a YouTube or any, any channel where you're promoting it, okay? Let's see. Um, how do you access YouTube Studio? Oh, okay, let me show you how you can access YouTube Studio. Let me go here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to go to a live demo. So give me just a moment to get there. I'm just going to showcase this to you here. All right, let me bring this, throw this up here. Oops, broadcasting, so it's a little bit low. So when you're in your free Google account or Gmail account, you'll see your icon right here, but this is what's known as the app keypad. We trainers call it the app waffle, but is it the app keypad? If you click here, right in there when you're already logged into your Google or free Gmail account. So this is what it looks like with a Google account. Gmail would have all of the, the your email addresses there. You toggle on down here and scroll and you'll see YouTube. You can click on YouTube. Once you do that, then when you're in YouTube, you have the ability, I'll show you what this looks like here. Oops, still a little small. Okay, oops, too big, one down. All right, when you're in here, when you click here, you'll see YouTube channel, YouTube, so you can get into your YouTube studio here. And it'll be here on that right-hand side. It'll be a choice. I'm already in YouTube studio, so it's showing you the studio here. That's why it's not giving me the choice here. You can also switch to a different account if you signed it up through a different account, all right? And if you need um, me to review that again, um, I'm happy to do that at the end because I will go into my trainer demo account. That's my actual personal account, so I don't want to show off all the emails that I have in there, but I can show you through my demo account a little bit better walkthrough if you want that. Now, when you're in the YouTube studio, you're going to click create. Again, you're going to go at that icon at the top right. You're going to click create, and you can either upload videos that you've already recorded or you can go live. Now, once you set up, so as soon as you set up your YouTube channel, you will you want to apply to go live, okay? Because it takes 24 hours to go live from a channel once you decide you want to enable that. But that's only the first time. Once it's enabled, you're good to go. You can go instantly, anytime then. But it has to be enabled first. So once you click go live, it'll send you through a process. You just fill in the blanks, and then you'll be improved to be enabled. Once you're enabled, once that function is enabled on your channel, you can go live immediately from a desktop anytime, just within seconds. Hey, let's go to live. Let's go do this. If you want to go live from a mobile device, 
you have to have a thousand subscribers. So that might be goal one in your YouTube strategy is how can I get to a thousand subscribers? You know, maybe I've got all these people following me on all my socials, but I don't have a way to connect with them if those socials go down for any reason. So I'm going to bring them over to YouTube and find out their email address and then really get them to be subscribers a thousand subscribers now you can go live from a mobile device which is what i like to do when i'm on comic-con floor but do understand that as soon as it's enabled and it takes 24 hours you can go live from a desktop okay so you can also those select files that you want to upload here and you can upload those once you upload those you're going to look at your title think about what the subject is and absolutely what people are searching for and how well that matches do not just try to put a sexy title up here to try to get people to look and it has nothing to do with the video because what happened last month so in the month of october and late september six six google updates came out called the helpful update content and what that is is they went through and they actually penalized anybody that was keyword stuffing so just putting a bunch of keywords and keyword phrases and they started moving that down so it doesn't show up in the first page of search and if you're not in the first page of search you don't exist people don't look at page two and three so what they did is they pushed that down they're looking for a good experience from somebody who's utilizing Google and searching. So you do want to give them that really good experience. So what you can do here now is put that title in, matching what you're giving them, put your description, remember what I said about using their words, and putting a thumbnail. Now to optimize this, what you want to do in the description is use timestamps. And I don't use the timestamps that Google, that YouTube does. I actually put my own timestamps in. Zero dot, so zero colon zero zero, is the title i put that in first then after that you can put different things that happen at the 15 second mark or the minute mark or three minute depending on the length of your video that cover certain subjects that your people are searching for so you need to know what the words are that people are using that's why i started with that at first then you could put those in those tight time stamps work like keywords they really are given more favor to the algorithm and they are seen a lot higher so that's what i put that in there and then you can also put hashtags in there if you like choose the thumbnail remember to make it a good visual of your brand but make it easy for people to see don't clutter it with a lot of text remember it's a thumbnail okay after that you can put subtitles in i encourage you to do that because 64 percent of us have sound off and anything that we're watching subtitle titles make it and give us the decision if we're going to save something or even watch it and go in more if it matters an end screen i like to use this because at the end you can encourage them to look at another one of your videos you do have to have video on your actual channel to be able to do that but i know that by default youtube ends with all these suggestions and that my competitor can be in that suggestion i don't control that the suggested videos so you can put in this end screen enticing them to look at your next video and cards actually pop up during the video like let's say if I say go to mariacoaches.com then that'll show up there and you can see a good visual of what that looks like and the link to take them there all right now what also happens is a copyright check happens so you will see this in the next screen you can wait for that to go through but a lot of times i'll just upload things and wait and let it notify me if it doesn't go through if there's any issues that usually happens with songs so do keep that in mind after that decide on your visibility do you want it to be private so if you keep it private it means only the people when they're logged into the email address that you send it to can see it so my mom is in her 80s and she has subscribed to many things, receiving many videos, but she doesn't remember which Google account because Google account, <clears throat> Gmail accounts are so easy to set up. She doesn't remember which one she logged into. So I get the tech support call of where is this? And it's really because she's in another, <clears throat> excuse me, another Gmail account. Hold on just a second. It's been really windy <clears throat> in West Texas. <clears throat> the past couple of days with the, the cold uh, blowing in. So I apologize for that. Took like a gust of dust right there. All right, so we've got private videos. Again, it's only focused on the people who you send it to and to that email address that can access it. So if they're using another email, <coughs> that's not gonna work. So you might wanna unpub unpublish it. Sorry, keep it unpublished or unlisted. So it is published, but it's unlisted. So it's got this long URL after it, which means people can't figure that out. It really is private to everybody you send it to, but they can be with whatever email they're logged in with. They just have to have that link. 
to be able to click to it and get to it. So you can keep it unlisted or you can keep it public because, hey, we're using this to grow our business anyway, and we might be still trying to figure out who that best audience is, so we'll send them there. You can now schedule it too. So let's say you you go live or you not go live, but you post every nine o'clock on Thursday, let people know that in your actual um, featured uh, video, and now you can actually schedule that. And then once it's scheduled, now you have all of this ability, all these apps that connect nicely with it already, or you can just hear and copy on that clipboard and share that copy link and even an email or your socials, all right? So you heard me talk about YouTube Shorts. What you need to do with YouTube Shorts is they are 60 seconds or less. But here is where you can use good content that you've already created on TikTok, Instagram, or any other video platform. You see, not everybody's on TikTok and Instagram, but we know 98% search Google search. And if you have a chance for your YouTube Short to show up in Google search, why wouldn't you repurpose that content? Spend more time curating than creating. Okay, so you can go here and even cut it down to less than 60 seconds, but it can entice them in the description to go even look more, or you can upload both, the short and then the longer form video is an actual video on YouTube. The only thing is make sure you use the hashtag shorts so it will show up in the shorts area and you'll get another tab of your YouTube channel that says shorts. So here are some of the best practices here, see that horrible URL. So you know, when you unlist things, you get this horrible URL like this that's not easy for people to find. But you can go here if you want to take a screenshot of that. And remember, if you do want a copy of today's slides, just put two in the question box. If you want to learn more, you really want to take that deeper dive, you too want to be an expert in YouTube and how to create good videos, then you can enroll in Creator Academy. It's 100% free. And it has webinars and recorded sessions and worksheets and walkthroughs of how to do all these different things and take advantage of the functions and functionality of YouTube, okay? So you can get there at Creator Academy. Now you can also promote your business with video. I'm not gonna have time to go through the video, so thankfully that's good because a lot of times I lose a lot of people there. But I do wanna talk to you about ads. Use all that other stuff first, but let me go quickly through ads. What you can do with ads is you'll go to youtube.com slash ads, right? That's how you get there. The ads could be bumper ads, which are at the end. Those are the six seconds at the beginning and the end of a video. You can have non-skippable in-stream ads. You've seen them before they come up, they won't skip. You've got to wait through them to get to the actual video. You have outstream ads, which are actually showing up in the YouTube stream as you're looking at different things all of a sudden hey maybe you might be interested in this video and then also discoveries on that right hand side when you're on a desktop or laptop where you can discover it or in-stream ads which means they're there but you can skip them you get the chance to skip out of them they actually show up before the video and they're more than just the six second sound bite here's what I encourage you to do especially if you're looking to maximize what you're doing on YouTube do the bumper ads because there's a lot you can say in six seconds and people can see your brand your brand visual they can see your brand name your even your tagline all of that right away there's a lot of memory six seconds is a long time on youtube so keep that in mind but here's really my favorite so i do encourage you to do that but here's my absolute favorite use the skippable in-stream ads and here's why because with bumper ads you pay by impression just by people looking at it but you don't know if they're paying attention or they just swipe past with skippable in-stream ads, what that means is they did not skip the ad if they're watching it. So you only pay if they don't skip the ad and they watch full 30 seconds or the entire ad. That's when you pay. But if they see it at the very beginning and they skip through in those first six seconds, you can put all of the same things that you can do in bumper. You can put all that up, you're good to go. So keep that in mind that you can use this to get good visibility. And if you use the skippable in-stream ad, you also get this free banner ad that follows them everywhere. So they start looking and comparing you to your actual competitors. It's really cool. You get all of that visibility and you don't have to pay a lot of money for that. So I know we're right at a minute before the top of the hour. I covered quite a bit, but I do want you to, again, apply what you learn. Knowledge is not powerful until applied, so it could be to create your channel. It's to optimize and maximize it by creating and uploading videos and putting into practice some of the expert tips I told you today, and then also explore additional resources like Creator Academy. Or maybe you decided, I don't want to do this at all, so I'm going to work with somebody and get somebody who's certified by Google. And get with your local Google partner because they might not know somebody locally who could do this for you. Do you also understand we have a YouTube channel? You can go there anytime, take a good look at it. 
and you're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording right now. Well, actually, let me, let me see here. Hold on a second. I'm going to get to here where that way you can see where your actual Google partners are because you can go here to this URL if you want to see what trainings we do and request that of your Google partner. But these are who your Google partners are. All right, I'm going to stop the recording now.